Hi, this is Linda Burkhart, and I'm a special educator by train, training originally, and then on to assistive technology, augmentative, and alternative communication. Work with kids all over the place, as well as present trainings. And I think the most important part is working from, with the kids, because if I wasn't still working with kids, I probably couldn't get up here and uh, talk to you about all the things that you might want to try with kids. See you. And this is Fio Quinn, um, working in the educational field since 1985, many years ago. And I was a, a classroom special educator. Currently, I am an independent consultant, and I also am a developer of uh, technology materials and uh, offer trainings on uh, assistive technology topics, uh, differentiated instructions, communication, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Today is uh, the last part of uh, this webinar series, and we would like to thank AbleNet and Deb in particular for their support their, uh, and for um, giving us the opportunity to share some knowledge and some materials. And we hope that this information and materials are useful to you. Uh, one quick note before uh, we start. Uh, you received two handouts this time. One as the presentation slide, and the other one is a list of a variety of resources that are switch accessible, and they are organized according to the stepping stones. So um, we, we showed some of them uh, during the three sessions, but, uh, and we are going to show some today, but for time reasons, we could not go in, in depth. So you have your material and you can go and explore by yourself on your own. We also last time received a question about switch accessible resources for Chromebooks and um, uh, some of the activities that are available online, such as materials from Help, Help Kids Learn, uh, Choose It Maker 3, uh, Ian Bean, uh, Papunet, Tar Hill Reader, they all work well. Um, of course, you need a switch interface and if you have a Bluetooth, uh, you just connect it to your Chromebook via Bluetooth and you're good to go. Uh, you might also have a switch interface such a DJ Pro and that's showing one. And that works well uh, right immediately. You connect it and, and it goes pretty well. Um, remember that Chromebooks work a, uh, an operating system that's Chrome and it's different from Windows and Mac. So if you need to install um, other drivers, that's not would be possible. So use interfaces that don't have that, that don't install extra drivers and you're going to be good to go. Uh, there is a, an interesting PDF with a lot of information and um, uh, I think that has the link and if someone is interested, you can ask for it via chat and she will post the link and you can download it. Okay, that's all, let's start. And I don't have one to hold up. This is the ATEC um, switch interface, but there's also the hitch from AbleNet that works the same way. Yeah, okay, go for right. it. <laughs> okay, so part three. So in part one, we talked about the first early stepping stones and um, the way to get kids started with cause and effect direct and one switch. And then we moved into two switches, two functions. Last time we put most of our energy into talking about the concepts and the problems with timing and learning a motor movement to automaticity. And at the end of that webinar, we were getting ready to start talking about moving from that two switches, two functions, which is stepping stone three, to using it for step scanning or actually learning to step scan. Okay. We're, still talking, we're still talking about the same uh, students, uh, those with severe physical challenges that really limit their ability to directly point um, and access their technology um, with a hand point. Um, and acknowledging that many of these kids have many other challenges in addition to those severe physical challenges, vision challenges, hearing challenges, cognitive issues, um, exposure, learning opportunities, those kinds of things as well, um, sensory processing issues. And then um, we're also thinking about that maybe that switch access could be one access, not the only access for those children who do have um, good vision and could be able to use eye gaze some of the time and maybe switches at another time during the day when they are um, needing a rest from the one or the other. Okay, so when we're moving to two switch step scanning, where one switch moves it and the other gets it. Um, some kids just get it. Um, they um, have been doing some 
playing around with the activities earlier. We talked last time about giving them the opportunity to see a launcher, which is a, like a bookshelf, a place where they can pick their activities. And that's scaffolded because the adult can do that or they can play around with it and they begin to learn it. Some children just get it very quickly. And if a child's already using a communication system that uses partner assisted scanning, they may get this concept fairly quickly. For those children who need another step to learn and figure out what step scanning is, we have stepping stone four. And that's um, where we would go next. Otherwise you might skip this step with some students. Okay, so stepping stone four is learning to do to switch step scan and I call it move, move, get. So this um, stepping stone is when one switch does one thing and moves, moves it like the stepper and then the other gets it. Um, the technology features that you're looking for in software um, is that only one switch should be active at a time. So when you're moving across the screen, move, move, move. If you hit the get switch, nothing happens until you get all the way to your target. Once you get to the target, it stops working and the second switch works. This really helps the child see that one switch is the mover and the other gets it or selects the item. Okay, um, example of this is from Judy Lynn. I'll let uh, Theo share her screen and show you this. Yes. Share, and here we go. Okay, now this is learning to switch step scanning. And um, it has a variety of activities. So you can also find something that will be useful in the other stepping stones. But for this demo, we're going to use lesson four and we are going to use stage one. So there are three games and I'm selecting one. Use the switches to move the hammer and hit the alligators. So here is the Bluetooth from AbleNet. This is my mover and this is my selector. So if I touch the selector right now, nothing happens. And that is because the two switches work but only one at a time. So in order to move, I move the top switch. And once I get on top of my target, then this switch stops working. If I hit, nothing happens. And only the second one becomes active. And then I can move it again. And once it's on the target, I can select, etc. So there are different games that all work with the same concept. And this is, again, from Judy Lynn. Another example, I'm going to get out of here. Okay. Another example uh, on the move, move, get uh, section is from Linda's collection. And I'm going to use another set of switches, my mechanical switches, my red. One switch, two switches, move, move, get. So once you get to move, move, get, there are a variety of uh, resources and uh, some are for a different age group. So you also have to consider when you are selecting something for a student, think about the age, it needs to be age appropriate. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to see put on ads first. Put on hats. And what happens here, there is a path and the item, the hat just moves along the fat and once he gets on the child on the picture then the second switch becomes active and the mover stops working let's see how it goes I'm using my red switch to move and then it stops if i use this one nothing happens There is also an auditory cue, so you can listen to the sound and notice what happens once I hit the switch again. So the sound also helps the child understanding what's going on. Now that the item is on the target, I can select the switch doesn't work anymore. And this one becomes active.
and then another app appears on the screen and you can continue. Uh, this is a <clears throat> excuse me, customizable activity, so you can put a photo of some other person. I was talking about age appropriate. So we are going to see the same concept, but for an older student. So this is go get a video. And again, work the same way. Sometimes there are three steps, sometimes there are four steps. And again, if I hit this one, nothing happens. And now, once I select with the uh, selector switch, there is going to be a movie that starts from the bottom corner, enlarges, and plays. <laughs> And I accidentally <laughs> interrupted the movie, touched my red switch, and again, another, um, another character, another item appeared on the screen. And that is one of the features. You want your switch, your selector, your uh, mover to interrupt anything, and so the child can select something else and get out of whatever it is and move and, and select a new uh, activity or a new step. Uh, this is also editable, so once you go on this page, you can uh, not only select the uh, character, but also the movie. Then you have four different sets, so a lot of materials, a lot of practice for the kids. Okay, stop sharing. Okay. And uh, here we go. Okay, coming back to, oops, where'd he go? <laughs> there we go. Okay. So. Um, I want to show a video of um, Analia doing this. I guess I should have shared it the other way. Let me just do that real quick. Stop share, sharing. There she is. Okay, so Analia here is um, using a, the fire truck or a vehicle to the video over here. And she has two switches set up on either side of her head. They're both proximity switches. And when she moves to the one on the same side as the fire truck, it's going to move it until it gets all the way over to the video and then she'll select it. Stop the video. There we go. One work. <laughs> Next works. I don't know what the issues are. It's not the same problem as having. Okay, now problems. that is. <laughs> okay, it's over there. That's right. Good job, sweetie. <laughs> wow. Okay, so the video comes up. So I'm going to stop sharing that. And I'm going to share the slides. Okay, so um, there's um, some other software that will do this type of activity, and that's from Inclusive TLC. Um, it's called Switch Skills for Two, the set two. We talked about switch skills for two set one in our first webinar, but set two moves into the move, move, get um, area. So let me share my PC now. Get off my Mac and share screen. And share. Okay, so we'll open switch skills for two. And I'm gonna use the move, move, get part and there's easy and difficult um, options here where it will stop when it gets there and can't move any further or if you said that's the easy or if you set difficult then it'll keep going around and you have to stop it at the right right place so we're going to use easy i'm going to use the basketball players and we'll start here and get the switches so now i switch to get it started Oops, my switch interface I hit and it's in the wrong color so I'm going to move it to blue because I have my switches plugged in to represent space and enter because that's what this software uses. What's going on? It's blue, right? Enter. <laughs> it's in the wrong, wrong place. Try it again. There we go. Now you see a line of three. Um, Throw it here. Players. My mover switch moves it. And when I get there, 
It doesn't go any further. It stays there because I'm in the easy mode. And then my left shoots it. And then we get variety because now there's four players. So I can go over. If I end up hitting my other switch, it gives me feedback. Throw it here. Over here. Over here. Okay. And then all the way over. And then again, this one is not working. To make it go any further, and we select it. Now, yes. Slides. And, and this is also a, one of the resources that I mentioned at the beginning. You can uh, use them online. And so there is a version that you install in the computer, but also a version that works online and uh, works also on a Chromebook. So with Switch Skills for Two, it's actually not the software that works online, I believe. I believe that they've taken some of the activities from Switch Skills for Two and put them in to help kids learn. And so you, can, you won't get all these activities that you get if you own the whole software, but you'll get the ones that they've selected to put on Help Kids Learn. So there's some of them up there. And when you go to Help Kids Learn, um, you'll have to kind of look through the ones that have, allow you to do two switches and um, explore them to find the ones that are for Move, Move, Get. Thanks. Okay, so Stepping Stone 5. So that Stepping Stone allows a child to get the concept that I'm moving something. We also do it with toys where we're moving a toy with a delay timer set for a second and he moves it, moves it, moves it, moves it. And then another one that crashes or like he's walking over to a pile of blocks and knocking them down or something. So we do it with toys as well. But the idea is that, that the child is learning the difference that this switch moves and this switch gets. What I find is by starting them with two switches, two functions, which is stepping stone three, the children really begin to learn the motor control of going to the switch they want to go to. Now they have a reason to go to each one, and now it's easier for them to move into step scanning with the two switches, okay? And when we get to this level, there's a lot of software that's available because there's a lot of software that allows for this, the um, use of step, uh, step scanning, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. The biggest thing that I want to say um, with, at this level is it's um, no right or wrong answers. I want a child to be able to explore using step stones, stepping stones at a, at a cognitive, a simpler cognitive level. Oops, sorry, keep hitting my switches and uh, adding a slide. At a simple enough cognitive level where they are not putting a high cognitive demand as they're developing the motor and the cognitive motor coordination for step, step scanning and step selecting. So um, it's like a playground. We make an activity with a launcher that the children can open it up, get play with something, and come back to that. I used to call this errorless learning, but that doesn't work anymore because there's some vendors out there that have been promoting their products as errorless learning, but the definition of errorless in their minds is the kids can't make a mistake. So if the child goes the wrong one, they block them. They don't let the child make any mistakes at all. And the way I feel strongly and what the neurological research is showing for learning um, new, new skills is that problem solving is really important and getting it wrong is also um, important, but not getting it wrong in a way that it's, you're wrong, but getting feedback for each thing that the child does, exploring and learning on their own. So we're now using the term failure free with feedback. Karen Erickson and I were having a discussion and felt that was a better term. When you're looking for software or apps or whatever that works with step five, you want to find something where the scan does not start until the child activates the switch. This is for the learning process. At a later date, things can be different. But in the beginning, you want the child to start the scan because they need to be ready in their mind to start attending. Sometimes software comes up and it's already starting, the scan has already moved to the first thing and then the child doesn't know if it's the step or the scan or the select that they want. So when it comes up, um, it should be ready. And then when the child hits their step switch, it should move to the next item or should move to the first item and then the next item, the next item and the next item. The other technology feature here is that when you activate it, it responds immediately. Just like in the earlier stepping stones, you want the software to be very responsive. 
And if there's a long auditory cue, it needs to interrupt the, what the auditory cue is and go on to the next one so that the child can step it as quickly as they're able to or as slowly as they want, but it can interrupt. So when, when there's ever there's any action, it interrupts the first, that action to move on so the child gets good feedback. I can show you um, an example of this um, with Delilah. And Delilah um, is um, using a, a, a launcher type activity. Actually, it's a very old program, Classroom Suite, that was wonderful. Um, but it, the same kind of thing you could do in many different types of software. Um, and as some of the things that we're doing with the uh, Mind Express software, I'm going to show you a video of her um, with um, the uh, switches that she's using. Okay, back, share screen, this one. Okay, so now you see it. Um, what I've done in this video was I've put across the top what her screen is looking like so that you can tell what she's, since the, um, the video covers um, her um, screen and then eventually it'll turn around and show you the other side, but this will just give you a better idea of what the switches are doing and what she's seeing and hearing. And I like to stop it right there. She was going for Elmo and Friends, but it kept, she kept hitting it. And so she's actually in a place she doesn't really want to be. And I like, she'll, she'll explore this a little bit, but then she'll go to stop and get out of it and go back to Elmo and Friends. Hey, so she plays one song. Besides, that's not what she wants. Done with that one. Yeah, that was great. And also, just to reinforce something we said last time, when you create a launcher, it is important to give the child the ability to get out of what they selected. Because in some commercial products, there is a launcher, but then kids are stuck. They cannot get out without any help from someone else. So something to keep in mind that is really uh, key in this situation. Okay, so uh, last, uh, last time uh, we showed you something from Tar Eel gameplay and uh, we showed you the basic uh, version. And in this version, uh, you have the ability to jump in different parts of the video. So it's an advanced uh, programming, not very difficult to do. And so I'm going to share my screen. And we are going to a page created by Linda. Uh, here we go. And I'm sharing. Yeah, I have to share. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> give me a sec. Okay. All right. So um, when you create a list of favorites, you can create your own launcher, basically. And that is what uh, Linda created with some of the activities that she, uh, that she made. And so we're going to check the A-E-I-O-U song. And so you will see that there's going to be a menu that appears at some interval after uh, the video plays a little bit. And as you select the uh, vowel, one of the vowels, then you will go to that part of the video that is talking about they're singing the song related to the vowel that is being selected. So this, this programming, uh, more advanced, gives you the ability to jump on different parts of the video. I'm going to use my little thing here. Oops. Uh, yeah, it should work. Space and enter. Space and enter. Yeah, it is a program for space and enter. Oh, song. There you go. A-E-I-O-U, old McDonald vowels. Okay, there you go. So we go to YouTube video 
and adjust the starty activity, the song. Ooh, it starts. Old MacDonald had some bounds. A E I O U. Done. Okay, so I have my menu and I can navigate a. and go to the next letter, the vowel A or I. Let's select I. And on his farm, he had an I, A, E, I, O, U. With an I, I here and an I, I there. Okay, so you got the idea. You just select an area or you can be done. And so give the child the ability to select where he wants to go. And uh, in order to create uh, that uh, system, you have to select the advanced, get a URL from YouTube, put it here, and then you program. We don't have time to go over this now, but this is the place where you are supposed to go to create something. And uh, let's go over. Do I? Yes, it's to you, right, Linda? Oh, yeah, let me just talk a little bit about launchers. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, these are just some things that, um, well, the concept of a launcher is just the name. I mean, you can make a quote launcher in lots of different software. In Tar Heel Gameplay, that's like a launcher if it's your favorites. But the idea of using a launcher is really, really important because it really lets you customize activities and um, playgrounds for that particular child. So. You don't, they don't have to just pick the ones that came with that particular um, software or whatever. You can put them in whatever order you want and the child can have things that are more motivating and you can take and customize individual ones so that instead of just a, a standard person coming up in a dress up book, it comes up with their picture. Um, and it also can um, link if it's in the same uh, software as their communication system, it can link to their um, communication system as well. At this point, since it's, it's Stepping Stone 5, it's usually a simple, powerful, very simple communication system. A simple, powerful pod is what is being used here for Donnelly. It was custom made in this um, um, program, which is part of Mind Express. Um, but she's able to get there, and then she's able to go back to her Switch games and play there, so she can talk and play at the same time. Okay, then we have some uh, Judy Lynn things again to talk about? Yes, we have Scan and Paint. It's another product from Judy Lynn. And so the right side of the screen um, shows paint tubes and uh, they are of different colors. And the screen also displays a very simple picture. And um, uh, there are some, some sections in the picture that the user can color. So a pointer brush points to the section that the user can color. And by selecting uh, the, the mover, you select the color that you want. And by selecting the second switch, you go to the area and you color that area of the screen. We're not going, don't have time to demo, but you can go to, this, to the website, okay. and you can uh, certainly uh, download a demo and try it out. Okay. Great. Okay, we're also not gonna show this specifically, but we wanted to mention Go Talk Now Go Talk Now Plus with the extra symbols and things. Go Talk Now works really well for two switch step scanning. And so it is one of the apps that you can put on your iPad and um, build your own customized activities in. Um, and you have several different uh, choices of how many items per page from one up to um, 36 or something like that. Um, so that you have um, the ability to make a launcher for a child and they can get into their uh, activities. This is a particular example of a alphabet, an alphabet book, and it was started at the beginning of the year with just two letters, and underneath these hidden places are all the letters, and as the child gets introduced to more letters and you go on scavenger hunts and take videos of them with those kinds of letters or whatever, then it can go to a page for each of those. So each letter goes to a page that has videos and things for that child to explore, and then they can come back here and get another letter. So it's totally up to them uh, to pick what they want to go to and what they want to see. 
you can do that for a variety of different curriculum areas. You can have a, a theme or a concept that you're studying and have a variety of different videos and things that the child can go out and look for and um, study, like whatever. Yeah, and Potato Face, classic Potato Face game, um, published <clears throat> and sold by Marble Soft. And so there are six activities that allow the child to play with different faces, with expressions. So you have elements that you can put on the face. It's a nice, uh, nice um, activity set. And um, you can access it with switches, with direct touch, and with different access methods. Good. Okay, now there is another demonstration. So we, um, there, is a, there is a download um, link at the bottom of this slide and this activity is available if you uh, are grid three users and you want to download it and use it in your grid three. So basically, let me share my screen, open grid. And, uh, one of the nice things about this one is it uses the YouTube videos so you don't have to download the videos yourself while she's yeah, doing so, okay. it. Share and uh, here we go. I'm going to navigate, and that is the activity that I want to use. It's an example, YouTube. Previous page, example, YouTube. And there you go. And so in here, there are, there are some cells, and the three with the pictures have been programmed to go to a certain URL, a YouTube uh, address, with something that is going to be played. So we have ecosystem, learning about ecosystems. I'm going Great to navigate. Explorer. Ecosystems. I'm going to select this one. And then I have this page and the video is ready to go and it starts right away. Okay. And then you can play slash pause. The earth is covered. You can pause it, of course, and then you can get out of it and select something. Different. Play slash pause back. So it's very simple. And if you want to uh, create other ones, you just go into uh, edit mode for the grid. You copy one cell, you paste it over one of the blank ones. And then here on the side, you have the URL. So you go to the video that you want to use, you copy the URL, you, you replace it in this area here and you're good to go. So very simple, just copy what it, whatever it's already here that is already programmed, you paste it over a blank one and then put your own link, your own photo, your own uh, label and save the activity, very simple. Great. Okay, Great. then uh, the next Okay, I'm gonna still, bring up the screen again. Still need okay, right. so the next one um, is the, um, Mind Express version of this same type of thing of going to YouTube video, or you could, we have both versions of a, um, choose a video you downloaded and choose a video that would be from YouTube. And what I love about this activity um, is that Theo included the pause to be a timed pause. And you can set it um, for a number of seconds. I'm supposed to, you're supposed to be talking about this one. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Because I, <laughs> I was getting ready, <laughs> getting the video, the, the activity on my computer ready to go. Yes. Okay. Are you going to show this one? Yeah. Yes, I am. Okay. And I'm going to show the video one, not the YouTube, because you got the okay. idea of the YouTube. So in order to use this one, you have to, um, you have to download the videos and import them into the software, into Mind Express in this case. And so again, let me use my switches. Choose a video. Choose a video. And, and then here we have some videos, and you just navigate. Bike. Uh, yeah, let's use the bike. Switching to gear, let's go. As we climb up the hill, so slow down. Pedal a little more. The mind is working, it's in control. Your wheels are turning a little more. Going higher enough to not keep it steady, don't watch. So you, you notice that the video pauses because we have a setting page here and we have the ability to decide for how long the video will play 15, 30, 45, or 60 seconds before it pauses and then the user has to select again and reactivate and continue watching. So the, the child, the, the, the person that's using this, the, the activity has to practice. It's kind of forced, if he wants to watch the video, kind of forced to, uh, 
to activate it again and continue watching the video. And there is a video right now that Linda will show you and uh, demonstrates the actual, an actual child using this activity. Okay, so we get sharing. Yeah. Yep. There's Alex again, our okay. favorite guy. You saw Alex in the uh, last um, uh, webinar. I want to show you, this is because he's um, choosing a video it's about slime, which he loves, and he's um, playing it and it pauses. The first time it'll go the full 30 seconds and then I'll kind of just give you clips of it, but you'll see how he can start it, stop it, um, can pause, once it pauses, he can start it up again, or he can decide to go to another activity. I choose another video. He's picking that one. And this will play for 30 seconds. Oh, what's that? The ice cream that I here. What the hell do you like? Oh, I want a popsicle. Or chocolate. Or no. All have a popsicle. What? Do I hurry up? Chocolate. It paused. He goes for the left switch, player pause, and selects it, and it starts again. Just does this throughout the video when it pauses. That time he had already selected the play button. He decides to choose another video here and then he can go through and pick whatever video he wants here. He goes back to the same one. Okay. We'll stop sharing. Oops, stop sharing that. And yeah, he really likes that activity. <laughs> you can see that he's so intent and uh, so yeah, sure of himself. He just goes back and forth. He master of that, uh, that scheme. Yes, in his brain. One of the things that he learned. He he was there about an hour and a half on that video as well, and um, he learned that there were some parts of the video that he liked the best and they're at the beginning. And when it got to the boring part, he would just start it over and play the first part again or the first three or four times. And then he said, when it got to the boring part, just start it over again. And then he got bored with that and would go on to other activities. So, so that's that one. All right, so it's back to you, Fio. Okay, so this is a, a two-part activity, actually. It's called Create a Book. And um, you have a menu and, you, and the child can select a character and then can create a book on that character. And after the book is created, this will be the first part, then the book can be read. So first the child creates a book and then the child reads the book. And you can create an entire library with all different characters and it's is a silly dress up book. So I'm going to start navigating. Ryan. I'm Mom. And I guess you might Mary. think what I'm going to pick. Rudy. I'm a dog lover, so this is my favorite. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is a silly dress-up book. You can create the book any way you want. Rudy's silly dress-up book. So you have four elements on the screen on the side and then by navigating you can select an element to add to the picture. Elephant nose. Nah, I don't want that. Pig nose. No. Clown nose. I think it's appropriate. Clown nose. Rudy has a clown nose. And there's a text that appears on the page and highlights while it reads the uh, text. So that's Elephant good. ears. Pig ears. That's what I want. Pig ears. So I create, figures. create my character. Blue scarf. Bow tie. Yes, that's what I want. Bow tie. Rudy wears a bow tie. 
Cowboy hat. Clown hat. I like that. Clown hat. I'll speak that. Rudy wears a clown hat. And then the last page is a comment. Looks great. Looks silly. Looks wild. I like that. Looks wild. That looks wild. So this is the book. And you get to the end the page. End. And then you can start reading from the beginning. The end. Start reading from the beginning. And in, here is the book that the child has created. So now, as you notice, the menu, the actions on the side change. So you have the ability to go to the next page, read the text, and also read with some variety. You can read it very, very slow or very, very, very fast. So that gives variation to the activity, something that is also uh, some uh, valuable um, piece that we talked about before. Next page. Read this page. Rudy's silly dress up book. Next page. Read this page. Read slow. Rudy's silly dress up book. Right? So you got <clears throat> you got the idea. You can go over, you can print the book. So it's something that kids can play and practice and, and experience. Uh, it's a playground with many different characters. And of course, it is um, something that you can customize. You so an entire family plus a dog, and you can put classmates, teachers, anybody that you want, and uh, you can create books with different uh, people, different settings, etc. Okay, so this is uh, my next, still on, yes, the next activity. And maybe Linda, you want to say something while I open the file about the uh, next activity. Time, uh, activity. The next activity is make three letter words. And again, it's failure free. And the reason we're using failure free, just like in the one you saw here, is you can pick any person to dress up. You can pick any, um, uh, any nose, any ears, whatever. It's all right, but it's different. You get different feedback for what you pick. And the same thing here, we made all of the um, options here make real words. We didn't make any of them make nonsense words because at this level, we want the child to be having success and making the words, but getting response from which letters they choose, getting the right feedback. So I'm gonna start. To start. See if you can make a word. Here are some letters for you to choose. So you have the initial letter and you go B. over the list. C. D. I select the D. 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 Let's make a word that starts with D. Now choose an ending. And then you select your endings. Add. It. Og. Me again. <laughs> Og. D. Og. First you take a D. 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 Then you take an Og. O G. Og. Put them both together and you've got dog. D og d og d o g dog. And then you have a little animation. Dog. A dog says woof woof. And you og dog. And you have the word so in a sentence a using a Contextual right, situation for you to choose. And again, it's uh, an open playground. Kids can explore different letters, different uh, starting uh, consonants, and different endings, and uh, listen to rhyming and uh, and have fun at the same time. So learning with having fun at the same time. Okay, the next uh, example okay. is in a different category. It's a Copeland activity, and uh, we created it for Clicker 7, and in your handout, there is a link for it. Okay, so um, you, you work with a partner, so the idea here, the concept in a Copeland activity, and we will see different example, is that the child first generates what goes in the cells. So works with a partner, a teacher, or a friend, um, an adult, or another person anyway, and decides what vocabulary, what words are going to be included in the activity. Now, remember last time we talked about providing a learning experience that is effective 
and uh, is motivating, has a purpose, but also we want to optimize the experience and we want to decrease the cognitive demands of an activity. So if the words are already there, they have been put in the system, in the activity first, then the child has to just select the words, doesn't have to generate the concept, the ideas of what to write. The writing is already there. So it's just a matter of selecting different things, putting them all together. And the result, since it is a failure free activity, will be good. No matter what the selection is, the result will make sense. It will be correct. So in here, I'm not going to use any switches because Clicker uses F7 and F8. F8 um, does is the mover basically. So you have to program an interface with these two uh, keys, F8 to move and F7 to um, select. Or else use their, their specific uh, switch interface. Right. Which and, is already set for it. Right. And, and you have to, of course, go to the options, go to the access. Am I sharing? Yes. Uh, and then select the access method that you want to and select two switches, go over the timings, the type of scan, if you want sounds and then all different settings. I told you on the first webinar, each software has different options, different names for things. You can find the options in different locations. So you have to know your software and uh, look at the help or ask questions. Asking questions is always a good thing. So in here, um, I'm going to just use my Dear. You have selected and then you have three categories. And so, each of these cells open a category that is already filled by working with somebody else. So you have people in this category and you select Monica. Monica. Dear Monica. Then if you make a mistake, you can go back and select somebody else. And then if you are okay, you select click to write more. Pick a topic for a sentence. And then you have other categories. Something I want to tell you, something I want to do, something I want to ask. And every time you select a cell, then you are opening another category. Pick something you want to do with this person. So I want to play with you. I want to play a game with you. Let's select this. Dear Monica, I want to play a game with you. So every time there is Pick a Pick another topic for your sentence. Once there is a selection, then that sentence is added and then everything is read. And you can create an entire piece uh, with this uh, system. There is also in Clicker, there is also the ability to open a keyboard and the keyboards are also switch accessible and you can use that in case whatever you wanna say is not available in the cells because that is something that we always have to provide for literacy, always put in alphabet, for the uh, ability to access the letters of the alphabet so the child can use and compose and have access to say, write something that is not available on the screen. So this was done with Clicker and um, uh, you can download it if you want. We also have uh, numerous examples uh, in uh, Linda's next collection that's gonna be available soon and uh, you want to say something, Linda, while I'm going to open the volume? Well, the next collection is going to be the Switch Accessible Literacy Smorgasbord. It's not a meant to be like a literacy curriculum or anything. It's just a bunch of tools that have um, switch accessibility so that the child can be interactive with the materials that the teachers are teaching them. And some of it allows for this co-planning. So, for example, the, the uh, example she showed from Clicker is also part of this um, set of activities and the child can co-plan what goes in there and they can work together and then they have a product that they can email or send to somebody. Yes, yeah, so this is writing a valentine and um, it's writing with a purpose, right? So you are writing something that then in and with this specific software you can print and you could print it with other, other software too, but you can also send it via email. So once you have written your Valentine, you have different options to read, to listen, and then to send it to the person of your choice. So let's see how it works. Again, this is a Copeland activity. Start new writing. How do you want your Valentine to start? So first you decide, the salutation, I guess it is. Dear. Dear. Pick a person who will get this Valentine. Then it's who? Mom, Dad. I'm going to send it to my dad. Dear Dad. Pick a sentence to write. Okay. 
And then you have auditory scanning that's reading the content. Oops. You are the best. That's it. You are the best. Dear Dad, you are the best. Now choose a picture for your Valentine. So you select one of the images, and of course, this is customizable. You can put any sentence and any photo, any image, clip art, symbol that you want. A red heart for you. Okay, let's select this one. A red heart for you. Dear Dad, you are the best. A red heart for you. How do you want to sign your Valentine? So you already, there is an oops in case you want to select a different picture. You can go over whatever it's written in there. But you also have oops. access, as From I said. Your friend, love, Ryan, write your name with the alphabet. So you can go to a keyboard and then you can select something. You can write something. Be just quick, I'm going to write me. Um, <laughs> okay. Me. And then done writing. Dear Dad, <clears throat> you are the best. A red heart for you, me. Now okay. Something to but that keyboard does scan. Yes, the keyboard scan, I just did it quickly. <laughs> yes. Fine. You want to show the scanning of the keyboard? That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have other examples anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, once you have this, then you can read fast, read slow, save, email, and print. You go to this uh, area here, and if you want to print it, then you can select a, either a, a print page where the background is white and the text is black. So if you don't want to waste any ink, this is what you want. But some kids might really need uh, some uh, background that is really uh, different uh, with eye contrast, for example. So once you go to the print page, you can select this and this will print on a black with red text, whatever was selected uh, for the user because, let me go back to the beginning, in here, this activity, as all the activities in this collection, give you the ability to have a layout and a color scheme for the alphabet, for the keyboard, and also for the buttons on the page and for the uh, background of the page itself. Great. And the um, part that when the child selects print, it doesn't just send it to the printer because we have had kids just send too much printing. So it says out loud, it says, can someone help me print this, please? And yeah. so the screen she was showing where you had those options, those are teacher clickable to print it the way. Um, yeah. And then you can save your writing and if you want to save your Valentine and resend it, send it to someone else, you can get it and uh, from the page and send it to someone else or you can send it via email. So again, purpose uh, for writing for any activity gives motivation uh, and, and the joy of doing something and learning something new. Okay, so this was the Valentine. And uh, we also have a similar um, setting, similar layout for writing an article here, writing an article. There we go. Pick a headline for your article. So this is for an older student. So a student in the school setting that has to write an article. And so the vocabulary, again, this is Copeland material. You put something, the topic. Uh, there are four, three different topics and then the ability to, text. to go to, uh, to the alphabet eventually and type something if needed. And then you have some uh, sentences that are already programmed in the cells and that if the student selects it. Student fashion is getting out of hand. So whatever it's in the cell, then Type it's text. sent. That it's student fashion is That was because it was an empty button that we were gonna allow people to add more of them. Right. Yeah, so it wouldn't really say type text. <laughs> no, <I know. laughs> it was That's something okay. to show that you can have the ability to program the cell and type anything if you want something different. Once you are cold planning the material, the activity with the student, you can just type something else in here. Okay, so this is a writing an article, and then we go to step six, Linda. It's to you. Okay, I'll go back to the screens. Okay. Let's see where we are. We've moved down from here. How about we? Okay. Oops, we have. This is the um, version you saw that we had done in Click It. Um, Clicker, excuse me. Clicker. Um, a similar type of thing in the Mind Express activity and Stepping Stone 6. So 
once the child has had some opportunity, and I feel that children need lots of opportunity to have failure free um, uh, experience, that they need to have lots of activities before you are actually going to put the cognitive demand to scan to a particular spot or to be, have a clear choice or have a more um, cognitively demanding um, component to the um, activity. So once they've had lo lots of experiences with Stepping Stone 5, we can move to Stepping Stone 6 if, again, if we need to. Some children also skip this step and move to 7. Um, but if a child um, needs to um, learn to go to a particular spot and select it, this can kind of highlight that for them. The technology features for Stepping Stone 6 are that you look for activities that are the same as Stepping Stone 5, but now you have to have the ability to leave some of the cells blank or only a sound or letter, a word like nope or more or something where they don't do anything. You select them and they'll just say nope or more or just a sound, ding, click, whatever. Um, but then the one that they're going for, the target item, has a big effect. So it's a video or song, animation, or something like that. And Theo will show us an example um, from Mind Express again. Okay. I don't hear you. Did you mute yourself? Yes. There we go. OK. Yeah, so we are selecting a movie, Dolphins. Find the play button to start. And then you can see that the play button, and there are blank, 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 play. And so in order to get to that play, you just have to navigate. Play. Once you go to play, then the video starts. And the play button moves somewhere else. Let's learn about dolphins. This also has the settings. There are more than 40 species of dolphins on Earth. Click the play button to continue. So again, like in the uh, previous activity, you set the timer and either 15, 30, 45, or 60 seconds, the play button is moved to a different location and in order to get it, play. to navigate and start again. So very simple, but there are some blanks and only one is the one that activates the song, the video, the book page, whatever action you assign to that button. There is an example that I created in uh, Grid, and uh, if you want to have that, basically the same concept, um, you create multiple pages in Grid, and then you assign, yes, that is the example, and then uh, you, you change the location of the button. Mind Express has uh, some programming, some advanced programming that gives you the ability to randomize the position of the button. Other software don't have that, but if you create multiple pages, you can achieve the same kind of a similar thing. Okay, so that is okay. Stepping Stone 6. So let's and move it right along here, <laughs> moving into Stepping Stone 7. Yeah. Uh, we're now we're really getting increasing accuracy. And what I like to do here is introduce some things that have more right and wrong activities, but still with a fairly moderate to low level of cognitive challenge. So that the child is still developing the automaticity. So we don't want to put a high cognitive load on. But now some of the things are more right than others in what they're playing with or doing. They have to count to a particular number or they have to get to the right um, word that starts with a beginning sound. But I mix this a lot with Stepping Stone 5 activities. So the technology features are the same, um, but some things um, might have right, some of the activities might have right or wrong answers and some activities are just like stepping stone five so that the child has that gradual level of increasing challenge where some are very easy and, and um, a, the child can pick whatever they want and others have correct and incorrect um, feedback for them okay and yeah this is an example from uh, Boremaker Studio. It's, I just grabbed something very quickly from the software. There are many templates, many finished activities, and they, this is something that has right and wrong, right? You can select uh, the right answer or the wrong answer and you get feedback. And of course, anything can be programmed, can be customized in, in Boremaker Studio. And we are waiting, there's a new Boremaker, Boremaker 7. Yeah. It was recently announced, very interesting, uh, very curious and excited to see what it brings and what are the differences between the previous versions. 
Okay, so the next one is another example, writing about a picture. And if you want to say something about this activity while I... Okay, so sometimes in um, a literacy activity that you're doing with kids, children select a picture and they write about it. So this just gives the child access to some pictures that they've co-planned with you, selected and as options. And then it gives them access to, access to a scannable keyboard to just explore and scribble and write about it. Yes. And then send it email it, print it, whatever. Yeah. So Start new writing. Choose a picture to write about. So this is just a screen. I just put a picture in there. Oops, start over. Picture. I select that, but there could be a variety. There are multiple pages. You can put any photo, any image that you want. Write something about this picture. And then if you want to see the picture in large, some kids might want to, might need that. Show picture. You can really see the photo in a large dimension. Hide picture. You can hide it. Show picture. Show alphabet. And here is the uh, scannable. Read. Show picture. Hide alphabet. Space. Delete. Uppercase. And then you can listen to all the uh, names of the buttons because for some ch kids that use auditory scanning, that is very important for them. That, that's, that's an important feature. Done writing. A, B, C, D, E. And then you have all C, the columns. D, e. Okay, so I'm just selecting a, one. B. Okay, e. I want to write a B and then I want to write whatever. And again, read. I can listen. E and you will read whatever it is. I can show the picture, hide the alphabet to have a full. Read, show picture, hide alphabet, show picture, hide alphabet. View writing. And then I can see what I wrote in a full screen. So again, different options, but it's for writing. So kids just have to explore, experiment different letters, put them together, listen what they sound like. And then the partner, there is a partner that's also important as an important function to uh, help trying to understand what that scribbling might be. And then with the done writing, it lets them read it fast, read it slow, send it as an email, print it, save it all. It your writing. Yes, that's a concept in all the writing activities. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, and so I guess my goes. screen, let's see. Step eight, yay. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Um, I just have one screen in here to show that there's just so many commercially available activities that require correct answers that they can be introduced here as well. And the idea would be hopefully that you create a launcher with some failure free and some, but you can use all different kinds of um, uh, software that can program things like this because there's a lot more available at this level. And stepping stone eight, now you've reached automaticity. So now um, you use activities that might help you be faster at something, but basically you can do a higher cognitive load because once you have the motor automaticity, now you can introduce works where you can do um, assessment, you can do um, all kinds of more academic work that's at a higher cognitive level um, for students. This also, it might be a step where once motor automaticity is achieved, you would explore other types of time scanning. So we talked about the other forms of scanning in our last webinar, but you might be able to, once you've got some automaticity of switches, be able to explore those as well. And uh, Thea, I think you just have one activity you want to show with this one. Oops, you're mute again. You're mute again. Yes, you are showing that uh, activity, I think. The listening comprehension. I oh, said. I was? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Okay, let me see. I can do that. Finale col botto. Yay, the end. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, I didn't know I was doing this one. Okay, let's see. I have to get out of here now because I have that open. Escape and then open Mind Express. And I'm going to go to. All about dogs. Dogs again. <laughs> yes. Go to the media library and find it. So it's in the documents. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to go down to switch accessible, switch acts accessible literacy smart. Okay. And it's in the 
listening comprehension. Listening comprehension. And I don't have the, all about dogs here. I just have the template. Okay. So I'm going to search it quick. Dog. Here's an example of it. Okay. So click to start. So this is how it's set up and the child can tell me about this book. Select a purpose for listening. It just you record whatever you want them to be listening. And I'm just going to do this quickly because I know we're running out of time. They can read, read the cover. cover. They can start, start reading, reading this book. book. And it goes to a page where they can choose to read it visually or they can read this page. Have the page read to them. Dogs have very good noses. Dogs can smell things that people cannot smell. Dogs can recognize people by how they smell. Every person smells different. Dogs can tell people apart. Dogs can find you when you are hiding. And we use dogs help police find lost people. We used um, spoken speech here instead of the uh, text to speech to, because it's really a listening comprehension activities for those children who have um, trouble with the visual um, literacy and they need the um, auditory. So since it's a comprehension activity, we have it read. But if you don't record it, it will do text to speech. Read this page the again. Can select, ask me a question. Ask a question. And we have two types of questions. What does a dog use to find the lost person? And he could his use, teeth. Um, we could try that one. If the child his selects teeth. that one, he gets feedback. This no, is, a dog doesn't use his teeth to find people. He uses something else. Listen again and see if you can find out what a dog uses to find lost people. Okay. And we what have does a dog use to find the lost person? The feedback can be an auditory, somebody recording, or it could be text that comes across the screen. If they don't remember, there his is teeth, the option. His nose. To his go tail. Down to, I don't know. Read it again. And that option will go back to the page, read the whole text again, and then come back here so that then the child his teeth. can do the answer without having to have the sophistication of navigating back and forth. It just goes there and comes back. His nose. If they pick the correct answer, his nose. then it gives them feedback what again. What does a dog use to find the lost person? His nose. That's right. Dogs have really good noses. They use their nose to find people who are lost. Yeah, any of the people. And on the next page, it talks about how people feel, um, how dogs make people feel. I'm going to not read it to you. I'm just going to go right to the question. On this page, how the petting the dog make people feel. This is an opinion answer where all the answers are correct. So if a child picks happier, they're right. Relax, they're right. They're calmer, they're right. So whatever they choose. Calmer. Yes, many people feel calmer when they're petting a dog. Okay. And I want to just open the actual template here for a minute, just to show you some of the um, options that um, are in here. Oops. Sorry, that was not it. Switch accessible literacy smarts. Too many things. Listening comprehension. And the template allows you to um, create it. You can um, go to the first page and there are directions in here. But the idea is you can record a purpose for the story. You can add a picture if you want. You can record and type the author and, and an illustrator if you like. Going to the next page, you paste in your text here and then you can record it. Um, so you just click record and it brings up its, this little window where it allows you to click record here and drag the window over so you can see what you wrote and record it. So you can record into there. This button allows you to record a purpose for this particular page. This is optional. If you feel like you wanna um, just set the tone for what to listen for, you can have that um, uh, feature as well. And then you just go through and this is your page for questions and Theo made it so that you can have correct or incorrect answers. So you type your question with a correct answer and then two um, incorrect ones. Or you can make an opinion one where you type your question and you put your different opinion answers there where all of them will be correct. Okay, and I don't think I have time to go on to any more of that.
Did you have anything else you wanted to say on that? <clears throat> yeah, there's data collection also in this activity because we are at the level where you may want to collect data uh, on correct and incorrect, if that's the case. And so it's there too. Okay, we're done. We're sorry, we're 10 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> we and, over a little bit. Uh, there are some questions. I see there are some Q and some okay. numbers of questions. What questions so, uh, if you have to go, please feel free to go. Yeah. Thank you for attending. We Thank really you. appreciate you spending your uh, lunch time with us. Linda, you want to add something? I um, yeah, I thanks very much for coming. And um, like again, feel free to leave right now. But we're going to answer the questions because this will be part of the uh, video that they'll save on YouTube so that people can come back and listen to the questions if they'd like to. Okay. So I see the first question with the move, move, get set up. How do you make one switch active and the other inactive? Is there a setting within the program you're using? So this is a trick and not many things have it. That's why we showed you a few um, activities that do have that opportunity for move, move, get, um, like the, uh, the Judy Lynn and the um, Inclusive TLC. And it is also something that Theo does the magic for MindExpress so that we have templates in MindExpress that will allow that to happen, okay? Um, what type of device computer is she using in the video? Um, that must have been Analia, I would imagine. She's using a uh, generic PC. Um, it has a switch interface um, connected to it, and her switches are connected to the switch interface. Um, what's the name of the proximity switch? The one she's using is from Adapted Switch Labs. That's happened to be, they're a little bit different than the ones you get now. Those are an older version, but they are um, similar to the, um, the newer ones where um, a, a disc from Adapted Switch Labs. Okay, so let's see. You happen to know if these programs work on the Chromebook? We said that we covered that. that. Only really the simplest ones that we're showing, and then the most advanced, or the uh, once you get to Stepping Stone Five, right, there might be more that you could use there. But it's yeah, it's not going to run. Is if something works on a on a browser uh, and you can activate that with keystroke with space and enter, then yes, you have. A good there chance. aren't many things specifically made for Chromebooks, so that's why we're saying use the online. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, what are those pads and straps the client's using in the last slide? I don't know what slide was the last one when they wrote that. Hmm. Was it this one, maybe? Could have been Monica, because she has a tray that's custom built with pads and soft straps to give her stability so she can use her fingers to activate the switches. That was a custom made one. Uh, do you recommend setting up switches always on the same sides? Move, switch on left, get, switch on right. Um, I recommend, yes, I do that. And if the child is equally able to get to the left and the right, I use the left for the move because left to right on the screen works that way nicely. And then the select is on the um, right. If, however, um, I can change that for particular children if it's needed. We just switch the switches around or we do it in a different way. But when you're in the early stepping stones, two switches, two functions, um, you can move them both sides. You wanna give the child opportunity to do different, different things with different switches, there's no fix. But once you move to move, move, get, like we're talking about in this webinar, then I like to keep it standard for that child. And the default is left would be the move. Okay. Um, what is the black sheet covering the table in the previous slide when students choosing the mini jelly bean hmm. purple switch. Um, this one, uh, I think that's a piece of black construction paper. But we often use a piece of black, fa black fabric that we can just put over the whole um, uh, table or I'll use a piece of a dark uh, indoor outdoor carpet that I can um, uh, cut to the shape of the wheelchair tray or the table and that way it has Velcro sensitive because the carpet, a lot of times the switches will stick if you have the hook Velcro on the switch. Um, I also can, you can use that uh, Tempo Loop fabric or that fabric that's Velcro sensitive. Um, and then you can move the switches around and they don't slide like they did in this particular video. 
Okay, yeah. what program do you use to create customized launchers? Well, any software that is a, an authoring tool that allows you to, as a grid type of page and where you can put cells and has the ability to link a cell, a unit, to an activity, to a page, to a different file. A lot of the software that's made for dynamic display communication can be used for this type of thing because you click something, it goes to another page. Yeah, so like Clicker does that, Grid, MyExpress, um, and other ones that we saw um, give, give you that ability. Uh, okay. Does the district fund this or the parents? <laughs> does the <laughs> district fund it? I guess it depends on where you lived and what's happening. I hope the districts are. Uh, funding it if it's um, part of the child's IEP. Um, that um, some of the children I work with at home in school, some of them, their materials come from school and go home with them, and some are purchased by parents and go back and forth that way. So it happens all different ways, but it, the IEP would be um, what would determine part of that funding, I'm sure. I'm not sure what program this is this. I'm not sure what that one is too. Is this silly dress up book part of two switch activities set in Mind Express? That's the new one. That's the switch accessible literacy smorgasbord that hopefully will be out soon. Um, and same answer for the next create, question. Create, create a book is the same. How can I download the software to write an article? Is it free? No, that's just that's also in the switch accessible literacy smorgasbord, and it's a template. So we have an example of an article about dressing, fashion dressing, whatever, but that's um, a template. So you could, if you get that particular, um, if you have Mind Express and you purchase the uh, Switch Accessible Literacy Smorgasbord when it comes out, that template will be in there. Yeah, but if you have like Clicker, you can, like in the example that I showed you with the Copeland activity example, you can basically program a cell with the child and put text in there and use that other software if you have access to Clicker or something like that. A similar, or Bore Maker, yes. Uh, mentioned. In Clicker, can the writing options be set up for auditory scanning? Yes, it's an option available in Clicker. What is the A? Copeland activity, uh, Copeland activity, I guess. Oh, Copeland. <laughs> yeah. So let's see, uh, where do we have that? Um, um, no, the writing things here. Copeland. So that, that the child's assistant or teacher sits down with the child and co-plans some of the items in the um, activity. So for the writing letters, the, the teacher and the student will decide, well, who do we want in there? And they will co-plan what names to put in and what kinds of things you might want to say. And they may use their AAC system or other ways to co-plan what kinds of things go into the activity. Uh, you mentioned Burmaker. I was wondering if you have used Lesson Picks as well. Yes, we, we know what Lesson Picks is a nice uh, website with many different resources. Do we, um, do we know, I don't, I'm not as familiar with the um, scanning features in Lesson Picks, so I'm not sure about that piece. No, it's mostly a place where you can uh, create some uh, boards, some pages with uh, customized content. There is a, a nice uh, clip art selection and symbols. Yes. But I don't know if there's the, there's any um, interactive. I know there's some interactive things, but I don't know much about the scanning, so I can't really answer that. I'm using PowerPoint. Uh, and so whatever it's available in a PowerPoint, uh, in, I, and I assume it will be uh, space and enter the classic uh, key stroke. Something to check out. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and when we're talking about BoardMaker, there's different versions of BoardMaker. So she was showing BoardMaker Studio activities that have the animation in them. Yeah, but yes, Boremaker it has any uh, version that is interactive has switch options, of course. Um, not sure what would be most um, to switch to move through the steps if can only buy one. <laughs> well, if that's what the child needs to learn, then you have to figure out a way to get to. <laughs> um, <laughs> I the problem is. A lot of people think, oh, one switch is better. And we talked a lot about that in our last web webinar, that it requires timing. And it is actually starting at a higher level skill for children. Now, if a child can get to one switch quickly and easily, and they've already gone to the point of automaticity, they're at stepping stone eight, you could consider using one switch. 
but if they need to learn how to use a switch with better movements. If you introduce one switch and they haven't really developed automaticity, you can encourage poor motor patterns and the child might be using movement patterns that aren't very useful down the road and it could cause you know, problems as the child gets older. So we wanna be able to teach them a good movement um, with the two switches where there's no timing and then later um, go to the one switch. Yeah, what program used YouTube videos without unloading the video first? Well, there is an example. There is a file in activity in Mind Express uh, that is part of Linda's um, collection that is ready, almost ready to go. And then I showed an example built with Grid, uh, with Grid 3, uh, where you can just uh, program a cell, uh, just grabbing the URL from a video. So Mind Express then, has that feature, Grid has the feature, and then we also showed the Tar Hill Reader uh, game, player, game player. Yeah. Where you can just grab a URL and then use either the basic to play the video and uh, interrupt it at a certain interval or uh, jump to a certain area of that video. So Hi, there Patty. are options. Hi, Patty, haven't seen you in ages. Um, uh, will the Bluetooth jelly bean switches, Bluetooth jelly bean switch work with PC or laptop? Yes, the, the, the AbleNet Blue 2. It's called AbleNet Blue 2. You want to hold it up, Leo? The switch interface? Uh, Blue 2, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yellow and white. You mean and this one? Called Bluetooth, yeah. And it's the yeah. AbleNet one. And that will work with a PC or a laptop. Yes. You just connect it through Bluetooth. With, with many devices, with different devices, yes. Um, okay. Um, should we use multiple software to teach a particular skill, example, switch skills, Mind Express, GoTalk, etc.? cetera? Um, it's the function of the software. You want the software to be predictable and reliable. And so you can do many different types of software as long as they're doing the same thing for the child in terms of giving them good feedback and teaching them where they need to be on the stepping stone process. What is the easiest to program? They all are easy if you know how to use them. <laughs> so you need to invest some time. Uh, what is the most user friendly for multiple stuff? So you know, you know. <laughs> That's a tough question. <laughs> well, one of the reasons I created the, the Mind Express activities is because you can do so much with one program and you only have to learn one thing. Um, so I don't want to put a plug for my own stuff, but I am, I guess, by saying that. But the idea is that they all work the same so that you don't have to teach them a lot of different programs. But there's nothing wrong with using different programs and be, having another program be your main um, one that you're teaching everybody. Um, the problem is that many of them don't do all the stepping stones. It, it's hard to, or have enough variety for um, the two students you may be working with. Greg? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> hi, Greg. I have to talk to you. We need to ta talk. Please email me, Patty. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. What is the most user friendly for multiple steps? We did that one already. Mm -hmm. Is there a good way to measure progress in switch use? Knowing when to advance um, to more complex switch activities. A lot of this is the art of teaching because there's no data collection per se in terms of did it get it right until you're really at stepping stone eight. So it's more of is the child getting the opportunities to practice? Are they um, through observing them anecdotally, what are they able to do? Are they differentiating between the two switches? Are they having trouble getting to one switch? There's so many factors that um, you need to be able to look at. I did write some goals for switch, my stepping stone switch process. They're on my website, lindaburkhart.com under handouts. If you scroll way down, you'll find some suggested IEP goals if you'd like to um, look at the kind of goals that might work with this process. Yeah, and, it, and as you said in a previous webinar, it's a stepping stones, uh, the name that you selected is because you like stepping on stones. You might go a little farther and then, okay, oop, you go back. So yeah. you have to s sit near the child, observe what's going on, and then decide what is best. Mm -hmm. always we want to keep them engaged. We want to just keep challenging them at the next level without going too, too high um, so that they get frustrated. What is the ideal time lapse, 15, 30, 40? It really depends on that student. Some of the children with very qu fairly quick access 
um, they really like the shorter videos because they like to be actively engaged and they like it to pause. Some of my other children that work really hard to get to a switch, we give them a longer time of the video so that they get more bang for their buck. So it's really individual um, for that particular student. Yeah, but you don't want to use a video that's two hours long, of course. Right. We just go to 60 seconds because we feel like that gives them enough. If they're at the switch, if they're at the time where they can just watch YouTube videos on their own, they're at stepping stone eight so that we don't need to put in those extra parameters and they can go and pause it and start it and stop it whenever they want. And we have those type um, of activities as well. Can you recommend grant opportunities to purchase some of these switches and software? Out of my expertise area, um, back in the classroom in the 80s, I used to write grants all the time to the Knights of Columbus and the Elks and different uh, organizations to get money for these kinds of things in the classroom, but I'm, that's not really in my expertise. How about you, Theo? <laughs> no, okay. Um, what's, what's the flexible mount that you're using? This is, um, this is Lockline from um, modularpose.com. That's the, um, the mount that is the, um, the flexible one. And it's, um, we attach it to the, the back of the chair, use a, a vertical spot part and a horizontal part so that um, we attach it with um, electrical ties and you can get removable electrical ties. And that way, if it's attached at a vertical spot as well as a horizontal, it won't swivel, okay? The ones that Alex is using in his um, are actually also, they're called Mogo. They're also from Modular Hose and they are more stable. So he started out with the flexible lock line type and now he has the Mogo type that, that can be very adjustable. You can just get them to slightly different spots and then um, tighten them down so that they are always in that same exact position. Um, once automaticity is achieved, should placement of the switches remain constant? Meaning if the switch is uh, to the move switch. Yeah, we kind of answered this. Would the child just figure out that they have to do the opposite or would the switches need to be put back to the correct positions? I really feel like they need to have a standard, but they may have several places. Um, a child may have more than um, just head switches. They may use another part of their body or do something else when they fatigue. Um, one way or the other and to give them more options down the road. But keeping it on the same side for that function once they get to um, step scanning is very useful, I feel. Yeah, and also after they are, they gain automaticity, they might, if it's needed, use one switch and, and use automatic scan. That's another possibility down the road for some people that need, because of fatigue or different reasons, they might find it better for them but you have to get automaticity first. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I think we're 30 minutes over our, our okay. schedule time. So <laughs> we can, we'll need to, to sign off for now. Um, and I can get these last few questions to you um, and you can answer them um, by email. All right. Thank you right. so much, Deb. Thank you everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.